Welcome to KJMagazine.com. It's easy to love these funny looking planes just for their sheer weirdness. But many of them were built to prove a point or to advance the science of aerodynamics. Here is a list of 15 bizarre aircraft that don't look like they should fly. 15. Scaled Composites Model 281 Proteus Bert Rutten designed the thin, tandem-wing scaled composites model 281 Proteus, first flown in the late 1990s, to investigate the use of aircraft as high-altitude telecommunications relays. Thanks to its efficient design, this model was able to fly at 65,000 feet for over 18 hours. However, the rise of unmanned aircraft means that flying a piloted aircraft for this kind of long-endurance missions is just unnecessary. 14. Vought V-173 Flying Pancake When it comes down to the details, engineers can try some crazy things. The Vought V-173 Flying Pancake was designed with the World War II Pacific Theater in mind, where the U.S. saw an increased need for ship-borne planes that could take off from. As inexplicably shaped as the V-173 is, Charles Lindbergh once flew it and called the aircraft surprisingly easy to handle. 13. Sikorsky X-Wing The Sikorsky X-Wing was built to combine the speed and propulsive mechanisms of a jet with the vertical takeoff abilities of a helicopter. Unfortunately, the program was cancelled in 1988, a long time after and far, far away from the first successful X-Wing. 12. Rutan Boomerang The Rutan Boomerang is asymmetrical for an entirely different reason. This 1996 aircraft was built to still be controllable, in the event of an engine failure for either of its twin engines. 11. McDonnell XF-85 Goblin the McDonnell XF-85 Goblin was built soon after World War II as a so-called parasite fighter, meaning it was built to be deployed from the bomb bay of a larger plane, the B-36. In the December 1948 Pop Mech, General Hoyt S. Vandenberg outlined how the little plane fit into America's new Air Force, but, in 1949, the U.S. scraped the Goblin alongside other parasite fighter projects and focused instead on developing methods for airborne refueling. 10. Grumman X-29 In 1984, the Grumman X-29 proved that the underlying lifting properties of jet wing wouldn't be compromised even if the wings were angled in reverse. For the X-29, as with most of these research aircraft, years of careful calculations preceded the flight tests. 9. Nemuth Parasol In 1934, the Nemuth Parasol, built by students at Miami University, demonstrated that even a circular wing could be used to fly a plane reliably, hundreds of years from now. Of course, this design principle will be adopted for spaceships. 8. Blohm and Voss BV-141 the Blohm and Voss BV-141 is a stark reminder that symmetry is not required for a flying machine. This World War II-era German wonder was designed as reconnaissance aircraft, and while few dozen were built and flown, it lost out to the, the equally odd-looking Focke Wolf FW-189 and never reached full production. 7. Lockheed Martin P-791 In the same vein of mix-and-match aircraft, the modern Lockheed Martin P-791 was built to combine the high speed of an airplane with the buoyancy of an airship, who says you can't have both. Lockheed Martin is still making and selling this combo craft, which it says, can stay afloat at 20,000 feet for up to three weeks. 
6. H4 Hercules II, a 200-ton monstrosity. The H4 Hercules II was nicknamed the Spruce Goose, because of its wooden frame. The heavy transport aircraft is the largest fixed-winged seaplane ever built, and was designed by filmmaker and business magnate Howard Hughes. Only one was ever built. Today it sits in a museum in Oregon. Five Goodyear inflate a plane. They said it couldn't be done, but in the 1950, tire and blimp maker Goodyear created an inflatable, flyable plane as a prototype for the U.S. Army. Sadly, the Army canceled the project when it realized there wasn't much military use for a plane that could be popped like a balloon. You will be missed. Inflate a plane. Four, NASA AD-1, wind tunnel experiments and mathematical analysis can only take you so far. Understanding all the dynamics of a jagged object cutting through the atmosphere is a bit like predicting the weather. There are so many variables, you can only extrapolate up to a point. So to figure out how a specific feature, like the shape of a wing, can be affected by the many stresses and conditions the open air will throw at it, researchers sometimes just have to build it, fly it, and find out. One of the oddest examples of this is the NASA AD-1. First built in 1979, the AD-1 showed that the straight and rigid wing of an aircraft could pivot up to 60 degrees during flight without losing stability. Three. Delacner HZ-1 Aerocycle The balance-driven Delacner HZ-1 Aerocycle was built with the dual hope of flying single-man reconnaissance missions, and building the greatest Bond villain chair of all time. A pair of crashes grounded the idea, but the dream lived on. 2. The Scaled Composites White Knight II, designed to ferry a suborbital spacecraft between its twin fuselages, the Scaled Composites White Knight II, first flown in 2008, can ascend to a maximum height of 70,000 feet. The pilot steers from the right fuselage, Virgin Galactic plans to use this ship to carry its spaceship to 50,000, where it will detach from the White Knight and ascend to suborbital altitudes of nearly 70 miles. 1. Bartini Bereave VVA-14 The Bartini Bereave VVA-14 was developed in the Soviet Union during the 1970s, designed to be able to take off from the water, and fly at high speed over long distances. It was to make true flights at high altitude, but also have the capability of flying efficiently just above the sea surface, using ground effect. The VVA-14 was designed by Robert Bartini. In answer to a perceived requirement to destroy United States Navy Polaris missile submarines, 